Loveland Magazine TV videos are brought to you by the generous support of MoveToLoveland.com. Hello, I'm Courtney Hyman. Thank you so much for tuning in to Courtney Explains It All. Today we're going to talk about inclusion. So what does inclusion mean? The practice or policy of providing equal access to opportunities and resources for people who might otherwise be excluded or marginalized, such as those who have physical or intellectual disabilities and members of other minority groups. Inclusion means getting out into the community and um, getting to do things with your non-disabled peers because then you can uh, learn new things and be able to uh, do things with other people. Last year I spoke to a group of kids about inclusion and I was telling them it could be as simple as um, inviting somebody to play with you at the playground or um, inviting somebody to have lunch with you and just, you know, spending time together and getting to know each other. Adults can practice inclusion by um, talking to a local uh, restaurant or business manager about um, about um, if places are inaccessible um, because if a place is not accessible, that can make people feel excluded. Adults can practice inclusion in the workplace by um, talking. If they have a disability, they can talk to their boss and tell their boss um, what they might need help with in their job due to their disability. and. Um, and they can work with them to find out what accommodations they need and what would be best to help them. It's important for people with disabilities to get the same opportunities as their peers because um, then they can, they can be able to learn new things and try new things. Um, I know when I was in school, um, I got to do things with my peers, um, like our school had a, a, a play and we got to put on Beauty and the Beast and I was one of the villagers along with my sister in the play. So when I was in school I was in classes with my regular peers and um, that, that was important to me because, um, because I I got to um, learn the same information that everybody else was, and um, and I and I tried to get to um, t to make friends and meet new people. Um, if somebody doesn't have a disability and they want to get to know somebody with a disability, um. You can just go up and, and talk to them and introduce yourself and um, and even if they're not like maybe part of their disability like if, even if they have trouble talking like they can um, maybe try to show the person what they like or what they want by like pointing at it or trying to communicate to them to uh, like communication device, so it, it can just be as simple as just going up and introducing yourself. Best Buddies, it's an international organization that matches people with and without disabilities for friendship. Um, I've been a part of the um, Miami University chapter for several years now and I really enjoy it. Um, so back when I was in school, I mentioned that I was in regular classes with my peers, but 
um, one of the things that I struggled with was um, knowing how to um, to make friends and how to build on a friendship with someone and I feel like since getting involved in Best Buddies um, that's helped me um, build on those skills and learn more how, how to how to build on a friendship. Schools could um, could help students practice inclusion by um, maybe learning about um, different disabilities because I know sometimes in school we would we would learn about um, different disabilities that people had and I feel like that could help students because then they see like Oh, they're, they're just a person like everybody else. They, they just happen to have a disability. Um, so I think that can be a way to, that schools can practice inclusion. One thing that workplaces can do um, to practice inclusion is to form self-advocacy groups. Um, I work at the Butler County Board of Developmental Disabilities. And we have a self-advocacy group called Speak Up, and um, we talk about um, how to speak up uh, for your rights and what your responsibilities are, and, um, and we've talked about um, how to speak up for yourself at your doctor's appointments, and we've talked about how to set goals for yourself. Um, so we, we've done a lot of different topics like that and I feel like that gives more confidence and helps people learn how they can speak up for themselves in different situations. For me personally, with my employment experience, um, I've, I've worked alongside my fellow peers without disabilities and um, I feel like for the most part I was treated the same as everybody else. Um, as I mentioned earlier, um, if somebody um, has a disability and they need accommodations to help them at their job, um, they can just reach out to their, to their boss or if they have a job coach that helps them um, they can reach out to their job coach and have them help uh, advocate for what they might need to help them at their job. Um, getting equal opportunity employment is important for people with disabilities because um, it, it shows others that um, people with disabilities are able to work in the community um, as long as we have um, the support that we need and um, also we're able to, um, to have that sense of pride and you know making our own money and um, and also in the work that we do like that can bring a sense of pride as well. So I enjoy going out in the community a lot and um, I know um, a lot of um, local places uh, are accessible and um, and I, I enjoy going to Kings Island a lot and um, I know they're, they're pretty accessible. Um, they have wheelchairs that that people can rent and also they give um, people with disabilities um, an accessibility pass where you just go to the exit of the ride and then they sign the pass and then you just wait a little bit and then you can get on the ride and you don't have to wait as long and have to be in a long line and then for the uh for the Cincinnati Zoo um uh they're they're pretty accessible and I believe both the Cincinnati Zoo 
and Newport Aquarium um, let direct support professionals in for free. So that's nice as well. Public places can be more inclusive by um, by making sure their buildings are accessible. Like, I've noticed a lot of the times when I've been at restaurants, like, they'll have the, the, the accessible entrance, but then when you're trying to go into the bathroom, there's no handicap button to press so that the door will open to make it easier to get into the bathroom. So, um, that could be something that could need to be improved is making sure the doors are, are, have the button, have the handicap button in that way. You don't have to try to, to open the heavy door on your own and then like either will yourself in using the wheelchair because that's hard to do if you're, if you're trying to hold the door open and will yourself in and then, um, and then also, um, having a sensory friendly, um, having sensory friendly options like, um, I know at Kings Island they have sensory friendly shows and, um, also through my work at Butler County DD, we will have, um, sensory friendly movies, uh, to show and 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 you can just be there in the movie theater and people like you know talk during the movie sometime or like one person was like literally quoting every line from the movie because they knew that movie so well and had watched it so many times that they were able to quote every line from the movie so um so it doesn't really matter if, you know, people are being like, for lack of a better word, disruptive or not, because everybody is just enjoying spending time together and getting to see the movie together. Um, so that's another option that we have is the sensory friendly movies. If you see something that isn't accessible to someone with a disability, it is vital that you speak up. There are many great resources that have information on what places are inclusive and accessible, as well as several great platforms where you can advocate for inclusion and accessibility. Disability Rights Ohio is a nonprofit corporation with a mission to advocate for an equitable Ohio for people with disabilities. The website provides information for places like amusement parks, restaurants, and public facilities and how they can practice accessibility. Just go to www.disabilityrightsohio.org. Another great resource that I have found to ensure that where I'm visiting is inclusive and accessible is the Rural Mobility Application. The app is designed to make life easier for people who use wheelchairs or have mobility issues. The platform provides you with reliable information on the accessibility of restaurants, public spaces, businesses, trails, and parking spaces so you'll never have to worry about whether a place is truly accessible. It's www.rollmobility.com. You can advocate for inclusion by um, being a part of a local self-advocacy group or you can advocate by talking to a family member or friend with a disability and finding out um, their, their experience and what 
things that they've run into that maybe weren't accessible for them. How I advocate for inclusion is, um, I, I, as part of my work at the Butler County Board of Developmental Disabilities, um, I co-lead our SOAP advocacy group. Um, it's called Speak Up and, uh, we, we've talked to, to our Speak Up group about, um, if something is accessible, how do you talk to, um, whoever that is, whether that be the business manager, um, or like a, a restaurant owner or somebody and, and tell them and let them know, um, that way, if they can, they can make it be accessible. And um, I've also advocated for inclusion by, um, I, I serve on the Ohio Developmental Disabilities Council. I was appointed by Governor Mike DeWine and um, we talk in our council meetings a lot of times about accessibility and part of the job of the council is to um to fund grants that come through um different organizations so um those uh organizations can help uh places be more accessible Thank you so much for tuning into my vlog today. Um, I hope that by sharing my personal experiences, I've helped um, people think about how they can advocate for themselves or somebody else with a disability and help make their community accessible. And um, that way nobody will ever feel left out. Thanks for watching Courtney Explains It All. And remember, nothing about us without us. Loveland Magazine TV videos are brought to you by the generous support of MoveToLoveland.com. Please like and subscribe to the Loveland Magazine YouTube channel so you never miss a new video.